What's going on, guys? Let's just dive right in. Take a look at this. First time going to church in Atlanta. So there's a couple things that I want to say about this. Number one, right? I always encourage people. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I encourage people. Remember, when I talk about these celebrities that they want to sing about Jesus, they want to talk about Jesus. I encourage people to keep doing that because I personally believe if you keep calling on Jesus, right, something's going to happen. And so from the perspective of, you know, this guy's got no shirt on, he's jumping around, you know, apparently praising the Lord. God knows his heart, right? So I'm not going to stop him. I wouldn't try to like, hey, you need to stop. I'm going to let him continue. Now, not in my church. You're going to put a shirt on. But from a distance, right? Hey, keep calling on Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. But here's the problem. I've been warning about this for about 10 years, all right? There's a Christian club they have. And I think uh, this video is from a church in Atlanta. And the club that I'm getting ready to talk about is also um, in Atlanta. And so, you know, we talk about spiritual warfare and principalities and how if you see in Daniel 10, there was a principality in the area. So certain cities have certain principalities and that's why the atmosphere is different. Many of you already know what one of the major principalities is uh, in the city of Atlanta. All right. <clears throat> it doesn't take much for you to drive around and see, you know, one of the big, whatever you want to call it, you know, sin, rebellion, uh, spirit that is operating in that city. And so I think that is interesting to uh, note with that kind of perversion. And so the problem is there is a Christianity, right? And I've been calling it for years, a Hollywood Christianity, a gummy bear, a version of Christianity where I'm cool with, look, if this guy came to church and his shirt off or whatever, Hey, you got to meet people where they are. But at some point, there has to be some kind of discipleship and accountability where you transform uh, and you do that through the word of God. God is still holy. All right. Be holy as I am holy. Now, we don't want to be super duper religious, right? To the point where it's all about the outward appearance and, and what it looks like. But the reality is the Bible does talk about modesty. The Bible does talk about holiness. The Bible does talk about not causing, you know, your brother or your sister to stumble for a reason. And so there is a Christianity that's being pushed in America where, you know what, you can live exactly like the world. You don't have to change. You don't have to transform. You can still cuss. You can still drink. You can still uh, respond like the world. And you just say, oh, I believe in Jesus. And so the Bible warns about this, that they serve me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So there's a lot of people that are talking about Jesus, rapping about Jesus, singing about Jesus, have made millions of dollars rapping and singing about Jesus, even preaching about Jesus, but they're not really living that life. And so I tell you guys, I've been in Christianity for 30 years. I've been connected to the, the reform side, the uh, every possible, you know, side you can think of. I've, I've connected because people follow me for different reasons. So I have people from every different type of denomination of Christianity, whether they follow me because of the music, the inspirational videos, the preaching, the political stuff, whatever it is. So I've done seen it all. And the reality is for many, Christianity is just, um, it's a cultural thing. Right. You know, in the black community, we just go to church to go to church, just like the cat. A lot of people uh, in the Hispanic communities are Catholic. They just do it to do it because it's a cultural thing, but it's not really in their heart. So you ask them, oh, you know, are you a Christian or are you a Catholic? They say, oh, yeah, yeah, I am. But there's really no transformation. Right. They're really not living that life. It's more of religion. It's more of just a ritual. And so the danger that we have and my homeboy, Antoine Hill from Kingdom Music, he made a beautiful post. I'm going to read it to you. He says, I have to say this. I know the times have changed. I know this generation is different. I understand the methods will probably change as well. But you do 
You do not get to change who God is or his standard. I'm noticing too many young people, especially in CHH, this is very true, trying to turn God into the homie. He's not. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He's holy. He's sovereign. He's not whoever you make him to be in your life to make you comfortable. He's a loving God. He does want you to come as you are. You can tell him everything, but he's the father. We need to have reverence for him. And that's a fact. Come as you are. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock it, but if you really walk out this Christian walk, the Bible says, take up your cross, right? Follow me, deny yourself. At some point, you're not going to do the things that you used to do. At some point, there's going to be a transformation. And what he said about Christian, you know, CHH, that's the truth. Most of the guys that are really accepted and pushing that space, they have no oil. They have talent, but they have no oil. And there's a lot of people that are getting in positions where they're using Christianity and they're not really ministering to people. It's just entertainment. I would say 90% of CHH is just is entertainment. There's no oil on the music. And then there's another good percentage of that where, you know, they just weren't good enough to make it in the world. So they said, look, I'm going to just say Jesus a couple times on a beat. And then when they start getting a little bit of success and a little bit of fame, that's why you constantly see them start acting more and more and more like the world. And then the arguments are, well, we're not trying to be religious. And it's like, no, you're just, you're turning Christianity into the opposite of what the Bible says. And here's the thing. I don't care what you say, what you feel, what you say you felt the spirit tell you. This Holy Spirit is never going to go against the word of God. The word of God is the final authority. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Study to show yourself approved. There's a lot of Christians today that it's all about feelings. It's all about being spiritual. And there's no foundation of the word of God. And that's dangerous. And so I see a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, I felt the spirit, um, you know, but it doesn't line up with the word of God. And so another thing we want to talk about, there's some Christian club in Atlanta. Now, I at my church, we turn up. We dance. I just tell them, keep it holy. Right. And I seen a couple videos, you know, and I think some people probably there, you know, for the right reasons. But there's some some girls like they're dressed just like they're going to a club in the world, swinging their hips just like they're in the world. It's not OK. Right. And we can go we can go through the Bible through why it's not OK. So the danger is, remember, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You go to this thing and it's, you know, feelings and emotions, man, this it feels good to be a Christian. I got my shirt off. I love Jesus. It feels good to be a Christian. I'm dancing and dressing just like the world, but it's not biblical. Like I said, we don't want to be overly religious, but we don't want to be overly loosey goosey. So what I always tell people, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, because guess what? At the end of the day. You're going to have to stand before God and you're not going to be able to say, well, Marcus Rogers did this. So I did it. Or this one did this. So I didn't do it. Or I didn't follow this. I didn't listen to this. I didn't go to church because they were all hypocrites. You know, I just listened to what the YouTube preacher told me, uh, but I didn't study. I didn't seek for myself. That's where you get in trouble. Now, I think it's important to meet people where they are. I think that, you know what, there's a lot of there's uh, one river and different streams. So the way that I move might not be the way that you move. And we got to learn to just realize that just because someone is moving a little bit differently, it doesn't mean that it's not of God. But we also need to look at it through the lens of the word. All right. So I think that's all I'm going to say about that. I would love to hear what you guys, you know, think in the comments. Go to www.marcusrogersministries.org if you want to support what we're doing. Uh, you've seen the post that I've been making recently. We're doing the final push on the building. So I'm probably going to have to write one more check when it's all said and done. Um, so we need about 150000 but we're well on our way. Uh, we made, let's see, a post yesterday. And people already, you know, sending like 10,000. So by the time she says, hey, we're done with everything, I can write her the check and it'll be a done deal. And, you know, as you guys see, we are using that building. We're putting it to work. We got the kids camp coming up. Um, so many different ministry things that we're doing in the building. So it's exciting. Couldn't do it without you guys. Love you. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus name.